Hey guys, it's Sandra from Metal Wani here with Fernando from Moonspell. How you doing? Good, and you? I'm pretty good. All right. So you've been touring in support of the latest Moonspell album, The Extinct. Yep. Uh, playing some festivals in Europe, now here in North America supporting Epica, of course. How has that been so far? Well, it's been a long tour um, since the album was out um, last year in March. Mm -hmm. We immediately went on the road, Europe, United States, as you said, festivals. So um, we call it the road to extinction. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he holds some truth into it because it's been very intense. I mean, we are together since 23 years. So we thought our life would be a little bit more quieter now. But so it seems that the album kind of took off and um, people want to see us. And so we've been on the road practically last year was very intense with more than 120 shows, if I believe. And uh, this year starts off well. We never toured with Epica, even though we, we know them for many years now. Mm -hmm. um, so they invited us over. We definitely wanted to get back to North America. It's a um, short and sweet tour. <laughs> right, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're doing, um, we're doing great, yeah. I mean, I thought that we'll be more tired or more bored at the time, but, you know, it's a new year, everything has a fresh start. So yesterday New York, New York was amazing. And I believe that um, Toronto will be very cool for us as well. So. Awesome. Have you played here before? Yeah, many times. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've played um, in many different circumstances in, in Toronto. <laughs> Once we even played the Portuguese Community Festival. Oh, really? Because <laughs> it's uh, in Little Portugal, because it's um, a very big community here. Yeah. And a very nice one, I have mm -hmm. to say. So, um, I mean, we toured here first time in 99 with In Flames. We played this really weird room. I don't know where, I don't remember. <laughs> everything was very blurry because we arrived late and everything. But then um, it kind of picked up. Last show we had here with Septic Flash was quite packed. Mm -hmm. And I believe to, um, and I'm not just telling this, but I believe that it was one of the best shows we had in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was some um, quite all right. And I love this place. I, we've played here at least three times. And I've watched um, Live of Agony here as well. It's a mm -hmm. very nice place. Totally uh, our style, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, so how have fans been reacting to new material played live? Pretty good. I mean, Moonspell, um, I put it really simple every time people, we made Moonspell to express ourselves, you know, and that's um, the most important thing for us. So Extinct was born also from a lot of ideas and feelings inside us. And then the musical part catches up. It's never the same. So sometimes I feel it's it's hard for people, you know. Nowadays, uh, crowds like to be pleased. It's not the 90s anymore where they <laughs> go after the artists. No. Right. It's like the other way around. And um, we still a little bit old school and stubborn. You know, we just risk. You know, we don't do the same album twice. So um, when whenever we have a small victory of recognition or the album doing well or great reviews or especially the fan support mm -hmm. that tastes even better because it's always unexpected for us so when we played stuff like breathe extinct last of us obviously i know they are not you know the classics yet for moonspell those are older songs but um believe me everybody's really into it um as well and they don't seem like just having one ear against big tradition of songs like 20 or 15 years um, ago, so I think yeah, I'm quite happy with the way people uh, responded and supported to to this album. Yeah. Do you notice a difference going from Europe to North America in the fans, or? It's very different. We yeah. kind of more established um, in Europe mm -hmm. um, here. I mean, not really in Canada in particular, but especially the U.S. It's a hard nut to crack right. because you know what we do. There's not many bands that we can belong with. We're not yeah. like symphonic metal. Kind of more gothic. Um, Several I mean, different genres. Yeah, it's not the girl together, singing; yeah. it's me. <laughs> so it makes a whole lot of difference, you know. And um, sometimes with many bands gone or not touring the states, like mm -hmm. Tiamat or Type of Negative, or yeah. it's sometimes it's hard for us to fit in. But um, I mean, we never gave up. So um, I think that in some places in North America. Um, it's getting stronger, I think, um, especially in the cities like here or uh, Montreal or um, we had shows in other places in Canada that were quite solid, like Calgary and the mountain. Mm -hmm. And um, some others are slower, but, you know, that's the, that's the thing. I think what counts in the end of the day 
it's the, um, the impression you leave. And uh, I believe if I can judge by the impressions, I think that um, last time the Toronto crowd was so into us that mm -hmm. probably I hope now also with the Epica audience that we can maximize on that effect. That's yeah. always what um, I hope regardless of how many people are you playing or if it's a good place or um, or um, or a bad place. But um, yeah, the fans are different and the scene is very, very different, mm -hmm. um, I would say. But I think it's really catching up, you know. Uh, in, ten years ago, it was totally different, you know, coming yeah. here. And now yeah. maybe we got used to it as well. But nowadays, more and more European bands come here all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about back home in Portugal? What's the metal scene like there? Well, I mean, the metal scene there exists since the late 70s, the 80s. Um, but I think that um, bands, um, since that time, they always wanted to be the Portuguese version of someone else. You know, Portuguese Metallica, <laughs> right. Portuguese Pantera, Portuguese Meshuga. Know, Paradise Lost, <laughs> Meshuga, and so yeah. forth. You know, the bands that are actually detaining the whatever the trend or whatever for that time yeah and um i think that kind of um, um spoiled our scene it was a bad principle to start with because nobody cares about the portuguese pantero <laughs> they get the, <laughs> the american one the original one so with moonspot we always try to fight against it and to um in a way incorporate the Port our portuguese roots into our, into our music and um on the other hand try very hard to do something original not to mm. be the portuguese cradle of filth or whatever <laughs> you know so I think that um, step by step we could uh, achieve a, a good sound, an original sound that was took us um, from Portugal into other places. And I think that um, the Portuguese scene is still catching up with many years of um, emulating bands rather than doing their own stuff. But obviously, there's great talent over there. It's a very overlooked scene because um, besides Moonspell, there's another band like there was this cool band more on the metalcore called More, more Than a Thousand. But they gave up, you know, because uh, sometimes Portuguese are lazy, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> and this is a lot of work, and this is yeah. a lot of coming out of your comfort zone. And yeah. that's the principal problem with the, with the Portuguese musicians, is that they can play whatever, a bar in Portugal every week and have a salary. Um, instead of probably going the hard way, and um, sometimes there's results, sometimes there's no results. And I think that um, you know, the Portuguese still like to live with their mothers. And um, you cannot have a rock band or a metal band and have this kind of attitude. So I've seen many Portuguese bands with talent coming abroad and then splitting up or giving because, you know, it was harder than what they thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, since you have been a band for almost 25 years, this is, what, the 10th album that just wow. came out, something like that? I think that um, I have tr trouble in counting because <laughs> we made a double album once, but I think it's either the 10th or the 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how have you, how have you seen the band progress, or how have you progressed as a musician over that amount of time? Well, um, the thing to progress is it has to be in your mind, you know. Mm -hmm. And we always had space for this in our music for experimenting, elaborating, and probably, uh, like you say, progressing. So I think, um, as a singer on Extinct, um, I've reached some stuff I was trying for quite a lot of years. So I think it's a long term process. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I think we evolved very fast and changed very fast as well. I mean, um, it's a average of an album every two years, you know. And um, but I think that's really much more than the touring. That's what keeps us together. To have this creative outlet that we can mm -hmm. join together. It's a very beautiful process. The band is all together. You know, there's a lot of discussion as well. But for me, um, like being on the studio, it's something that is. Um, more intimate for the band you know the tourings is about giving and um, the studio time you don't think about what you are going to give you think about what am I going to create or unveil so we have um, definitely a great time all the time um, on studio in doing this and obviously we started off um, with the under the moon spell and fart those are albums that actually caught the people by the throat mm -hmm. and they really just just that is turning 20 years this year uh, was an album that endured the test of time mm -hmm. and then we just you know had a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff to say in between the tours and that's why our albums always um show up because i think that's really what keeps us um together it's the ability we have to create something um, new and we're always thinking about it we're quite addicted into um, making new songs Some people say it's too much i mean we don't have really a, um, like a 
timeline to make albums. Sometimes we take two years, sometimes we take four. Depends a little bit on the touring. But for Extinct, I think that um, everything we learned and everything we we are as a band, we could concentrate it in those um, ten songs. You know, the melodic, the aggressive, the moody, you know, the more rock. So we were quite happy with the with the process of Extinct because we worked um, nine months for the album, almost like a child. <laughs> <laughs> and um, obviously we had some stuff uh, written, but um, even if we had shows in between, I remember first day up to last day in Sweden, um, there was not really a break from the album. And that shows it yeah. came out, in my opinion, more solid. Uh, as a vocalist, how do you keep your voice in shape after all this time and touring must really take a toll Cortisone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the easy way. No, that's the SOS. Well, first, I have to say, I've worked with many singers, and um, obviously, we always tour and we always the weakest link. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we get sick first. Uh -huh. So, I try to. Um, you know, invert that tendency mm -hmm. because I think it's a first and foremost a psychological thing. You have to be fit and strong in your mind, um, so that your voice is not like playing guitar or playing the drums. It's a instrument that comes from the inside. Depends on your mood. Depends yeah. on your health. Um, so, um, I think the best tip for singers is refuse to be the victim. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, obviously there's room for party and drinking, and I'm a smoker as well. But um, what I try to do, the little things, is to have a to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. That's essential, even when it's very cold and people don't feel like putting something cold on their stomach. It's essential to drink a lot of water and uh, basically warm up before I'm mm -hmm. going on stage. And first and foremost, don't try not to stress about it. I mean, this tour I have an easy job because we do 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. Epic and Simon, they do 90. Yeah. You know, so, but normally on our headline tours, we do more than 90 and it's a harder set. So I try to keep myself um, healthy. Some, it's, um, it's, you know, it's a very complete pro process from what you eat to sometimes the decision between staying on the tour bus or going just for a walk. I think everything is important for, um, for a singer. There's no magic trick. Um, and every, everything fails. I mean, just, um, take the pills and don't even think about it. Yeah, you got yeah. a job to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so is there a new album in the works? Not yet. Um, we, we're we going to, on this year, we're going to just do uh, more touring. More touring is upcoming. Um, and um, we're going to record our new DVD. Because it's been a while since we had a DVD. I think probably 10 years ago, mm -hmm. the Lusitanian Metal. So that covered a little bit of our career as a band um, up to 2004, five, I believe. And then a lot has changed. We changed our label, left Century Media. Those, that DVD is more from Century Media years. So, um, yeah, we are um, setting up for making a new DVD. That's the new project for um, 2016, and that's going to be our um, only release. Probably together with the DVD, we're just making an EP, but in our native language, in Portuguese, we like playing, tying with some ideas to do something weird, and um, I don't know, why not, <laughs> it's, yeah, sure. let's see, and, um, but for the next album, maybe next year, mm -hmm. let's see, um, we have, I mean, I have some ideas, I have some directions, but um, I think it's just not even one year old, yeah. so we have to um, promote a little bit more on the road while um, doing this DVD, mm -hmm. because... Um, where we've been always playing, and it's, it's. I think it would be a nice idea to have a document released that people can can keep and can can watch again when they want, and also to celebrate all this, um, and to document all this um, touring that we've done. Right. So we are making um, two shows in Portugal, in our hometown. Uh, well, not really in our hometown, but one of them, yeah. And um, we're going to record those, and um, it's still a work in progress. But um, I hope to release it still. Uh, after the summer of 2016. Yeah. Still have to record it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so after this, after North America, you're heading back. 
to Europe for a few days in March? Yeah. Anything beyond that? Yeah, we're going to um, spend a um, little time at home, also setting up for the DVD. Right. You know, sounding arrangements of the songs, etc. And um, then we go um, a little bit more uh, short European UK tour. Mm-hmm. We're going for the first time to Ireland. That was going to be awesome. We've never been there. And um, then we come back for, for a couple of days. Then we um, go to, the, um, to Russia and uh, Belarus and Ukraine. We're going to tour there. And then it's a uh, summer festival season. So we already booked um, in some like Grass Bob or Salt, Ampifest. And, um, and let's see, we, we are open to uh, the, the, the second part of the year. We have some plans, more Europe, South America, probably North America. So we are going to decide this next month, but um, there will be a lot of tourism still in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either I like it or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very no much. Problem. All right.